The Russians were the first to the supersonic market, before the Concorde with the TU-144, and it looks like they might do it again by modifying a supersonic bomber to carry passengers as its payload. This modified Tupolev 160 concept, at the request of Putin himself, would have an entry into service as soon as 2027 and could very well change aviation in the world's largest country. However, likely it won't ever be built and the future of supersonic travel is still very much up for grabs. This is why. Turning a bomber aircraft into a passenger plane isn't a new idea, and many commercial planes owe their initial development to military contracts. Even the mighty 747 was once destined to be a military transport plane. Thus, when top officials visited the production facility of Russia's supersonic jet, the Tu-160 White Swan, or you might know it as the NATO name, Blackjack, their thoughts drifted to modifying it into a passenger jet. It's big enough, so why not? The Tupolev 160 began as a response to the US Air Force's B-1 bomber. Russia needed a bomber aircraft that could fly supersonic at Mach 2.3 with a variable geometry swing wing. Various designs were initially considered, but in the end, in 1984, Russia selected the Tu-160 as the winning concept. But this wouldn't go ahead exactly as planned. After nine test airframes and 27 production units, the line was cancelled during the fall of the Soviet Union. Ten of these were abandoned and scrapped in Ukraine, and the others were cannibalized for spare parts to keep the initial fleet running. The aircraft needed new engines to become a modern plane, and struggled to find a buyer, including the Russian government, willing to pay for it. Flash forward to 2018, when the government signed a deal to produce 10 new Tu-160M2s, and restore as many of the existing ones using new engines. Some members of the government, including the de facto head of Russia, Vladimir Putin, floated the idea of turning a few of these airframes into passenger versions. This passenger version would have the same airframe, although inside it would only have a crew of two, a pilot and a co-pilot, with the bombardier and defense system officer spaces given over to passengers. And speaking of passengers, we don't know for sure how many could fit, but likely there would be enough room for passengers in a 1-1 configuration, taking full advantage of the space inside the unpressurized bomb cabins. At around 40 meters of internal space, and using a seat pitch of 90 centimeters or 35 inches, there would be around 88 passengers on board. Not bad. Although I admit any real billionaire who pays for this to turn it into a passenger plane would realistically only have up to 10 passengers inside to maintain the comfort that they're used to. This passenger version of the Tu-160 would have a range of 12,300 kilometers or around 6,600 nautical miles and a top speed of Mach 2.05. This would mean that the passengers could fly from Moscow to London in roughly an hour with about 30 minutes to take off and land, ignoring the sonic booms of course as it flew over most of Western Europe. So this plane had the space. And the program was short of cash, so why not let commercial operators and the many rich billionaires of Russia buy the unfinished airframes and have their own mini private jets that could fly supersonic? The tech was there, the planes needed modernization, and there was a market. The answer, of course, was a resounding niet. Big business tycoons in different countries, such as an Arab sheik, a millionaire in Australia, and a wealthy Greek among them, keep asking us to make personal supersonic planes on the basis of the missile-carrying Tupolev 160 or long-range bomber Tupolev 2M3, said the Tupolev Deputy CEO for Design and Research and Development, Valery Solozobov. And to understand why, we must go back to where it all began 
with the TU-144, or the first supersonic jet. While the Concorde is in our hearts as the de facto supersonic passenger aircraft of that era, it wasn't actually the first to take to the skies. The first supersonic aircraft to fly in the sky was the Tu-144. The Russian-built aircraft could fly faster than the Concorde and carry more passengers, although reportedly you wouldn't want to fly on board due to the lack of comfort nor the noise of the powerful engines. Apparently, people had to pass Past handwritten notes to have a conversation while on board. It was initially put into service in 1975 and would fly overland routes across the vast Siberian landscape, transporting mail, dignitaries and scientists. Very different market compared to the Concorde which ferried tourists and businessmen across the Atlantic. 16 TU-144s were built, but after one crashed during a delivery run, the plane lost its golden goose reputation and was regulated for ad hoc services. It was too expensive to operate commercially and would be shelved practically a year later by the government, using it exclusively for Air Force use. While the Concorde would go on to operate for decades still, which you can watch all about on this video right here. So when looking at the Tu-160 today, Putin himself remarked on the connection with the Tu-144. It was taken out of production because airline tickets must take into consideration the average salaries in the country. Today, the situation is different, the president said to the engineers. Big companies have appeared which could have used this aircraft. And that brings us back to our main question. Why can't the Tu-160 be turned into a passenger plane? There are two major reasons why turning the Tu-160 for civil use is not a good idea and not an option for Tupolev. The first is cost. Just because it has room on board for four to six passengers, or up to 88 in an all economy configuration, it doesn't make it a cheap retrofit. The bomb bay would need to be removed and replaced, Comforts and entertainment would need to be installed and the aircraft would need to be fully pressurized. Turning the Tupolev 160 into a passenger plane would be very costly affair, said a statement from Tupolev. It is far less expensive to build a plane anew and without the know-hows used in creating the Tupolev 160. And that remark at the end of the quote highlights the second point. The plane is full of technology that Russia doesn't want anyone else to see, including construction techniques among others. By having a private buyer, the plane could then be flown to USA and then sold to the CIA to take apart. An idea that obviously Russia is keen to avoid. Most of the Tupolev-160 know-hows are secret, so building even a passenger configuration of this plane for private clients would be wrong," added the Tupolev spokesperson. But just because the Tu-160 won't see passenger in service doesn't mean that Russia is out of the game. Not at all. In fact, it's hotter than ever with news that they are partnering up with the UAE to develop a clean sheet, superior supersonic plane. The supersonic race is back on. Back in February, a partnership was announced between the UAE's Mubadala and the Russia's United Aircraft Corporation to develop a new supersonic transport plane. And they are moving fast, with a goal to present the specifications by the end of this year. So far, they are flirting with two different versions of a supersonic jet, one that can carry eight passengers, while the other could transport up to 30, at a speed of Mach 1.8. It would have a range up to four hours flight time, which at that speed would be around 8,890 kilometers or 4,800 nautical miles. One of the sticking points is that the engine used for the plane, the NK-32, that's on the uh, Tu-160, isn't right for this concept. It's not the right size and it's not uh, compliant for commercial operators nor airports around the world. Needless to say, there is clearly interest among the rich of the world for a plane that can get you there fast and the UAC is looking to sell this plane to the Middle East and Southeast Asia. All we can say is, watch this space for more news by the end of the year. 
Today's video would have not been possible without the help of my Patreons. Being a Patreon, you can get access to videos early, support the channel, and discuss the channel and more in our Discord. And that's right, we now also have a Discord that you can join right now below to chat with other fans and catch exclusive live streams. And before I go, I also suggest you check out our website Found and Explain for loads more content and exclusive quizzes to test your knowledge. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.